Okay. Okay, so what we think we'll introduce the next speaker. Alec? Uh, no? Hello, everybody. It's my great pleasure to introduce a last speaker of today's session, uh, Dominic Burek, whose PhD thesis Arithmetic Properties of Finite Quotients of Calabria of Freefolds, was uh, uh, awarded uh, a distinction in the International Banach Prize uh, contest. Uh, Dominic Burek was born in 1993 in Tuchów, near Tarnów. Uh, secondary school attended in Tarnów and uh, from uh, after uh, secondary school, started studies, mathematical studies at Jagiellonian University, and until now is uh, connected with Jagiellonian University. His PhD deals with uh, Calabiao free folds, and in fact, already in last talk, we had a lot of information about Calabiao free folds. Unfortunately, uh, Martin Srok has stripped the name Calabiao manifolds in many cases where he was talking about this class of uh, manifolds. They gained a lot of uh, interest in early 90s uh, uh, because of the interplay between physics and mathematics. At early stage of uh, uh, studies of development of the uh, of the theory, uh, the main problem was the lack of examples. At that time, people were looking for examples with small absolute value of Euler characteristic as they were needed for string theory. Uh, so, uh, however, even after 30 years of uh, intensive studies, still the problem with Calabria manifold is the lack of a sufficient number of examples. Uh, we have a lot of examples, but we do not have examples, uh, enough examples which are uh, important from arithmetic point of view, which is manifested by small value of middle Betty number. And we do not have uh, enough examples of Calabrian manifolds in higher dimension. And in fact, uh, uh, Dominic Burek in his master thesis first and then in his PhD thesis uh, constructed those types of examples. As we already heard in the during the uh, ceremony, uh, he produced a lot of examples of higher dimensional Calabi Yao manifolds. Not only he gave uh, he constructed this kind of examples, but also he computed uh, the most important invariants, which are Hodge numbers. Uh, he computed not only Hodge numbers of all constructed examples, but also he gave methods to compute uh, much uh, more complicated invariants called Veil Zeta function. As probably he explained, the nature of this zeta function is arithmetic, so we cannot in this time expect to have general formulas, and we rather have to study to, to have something like general methods, but compute them uh, quite often just case by case. Uh, So uh, the construction of uh, constructions uh, produced by Dominic Burek can be considered as generalization of two important classes of Calabiao manifolds, the so-called Borchavoisem Calabiao freefolds and Kummer uh, type uh, Calabiao manifolds. Uh, he will give details on the construction in his talk. So let me just mention that his construction was possible uh, only because of usage of a uh, very sophisticated technical tools, which includes uh, uh, orbifold cohomology, stringy, stringy Euler numbers, McKay correspondence, to name the most important ones. 
Let me finish just with a few words about Dominic. He's not only a very successful mathematician, but also he has a very successful didactic work. Uh, he's uh, uh, during last finals of mathematical Olympiad, a lot of finalists or even laureates were his uh, students. Uh, also, he was uh, uh, supervisors of uh, pupils, uh, students' papers, secondary school students' papers uh, awarded in several contests, including Paweł uh, Domański uh, contest or the European uh, uh, Community uh, Contest for Young Scientists. Recently, uh, he was, last year, he was also supervisor of a student paper that was distinguished, distinguished in Josef Martiniak contest. So, please, Dominic, present your PhD thesis. Thank you. Thank you, Swarovic, for a very nice introduction. And thank you for the opportunity to talk and be a part of that conference, at least online. So um, during my PhD studies, I focused on Palabial manifolds, which are complex, smooth, projective default, satisfying two um, conditions. So first of all, um, the canonical divisor is vanishing, and I've cohomology groups or HIOX for positive i smaller than dimension, D is a dimension, also vanish. Uh, equivalently, we can say that there exists a nowhere vanishing holomorphic D form on X, and there are no global holomorphic I forms on X. When we talk about projective varieties, we have several very important invariants. One of them is, of course, Euler characteristic Betty numbers, and probably the most important are Hodge numbers. Hodge numbers can be displayed in the following diamond. And due to Hodge symmetry, cell duality, this diamond has a lot of symmetries, for example, symmetric with respect to main diagonals. Also, uh, if we know Hodge numbers, we can easily compute Betty numbers because it is just a sum of uh, the numbers in the rows of uh, this Hodge diamond and Euler characteristic, which is basically alternate sum of Betty numbers. Uh, in the Calabi-Yau case, um, at the four vertices of this diamond, we have always one. Ones and on the border we have the rest entries are zero. So here is a picture of Calabi of Hodge diamond in three dimensional case. Thanks to the symmetry, uh, symmetries of Hodge diamond, only two numbers are very important H11 and H12. In fact, in the case of Calabi of 3 4, they have also some another geometrical meaning. Why studying Calabi house? Well, first of all, because of mathematics. Uh, this, uh, these are generalizations of elliptic curves, which are one dimensional Calabi-Yau manifolds. And uh, elliptic curves were very successful in many parts of mathematics. Uh, cryptography, the proof of the Fermat-Lass theorem, and many other places, including some millennium problems. And also K3 okay, surfaces, to dimensional Calabi-Yau manifolds also provides, provides rich theory um, from both arithmetical and geometrical point of view. Of course, physics and um, connection with string theory, super string theory, uh, Calabi-Yau's can be considered, it's supposed to be considered as some, some kind of unseen dimensions in our space time and probably one of the most important mathematical problem uh, originated from theoretical physics mirror symmetric conjecture uh, 
in the simplest form, it basically says that if we, uh, for, for, for any Calabial three-fourth non-rigid, I mean, H12 is not zero, there should exist his twin, his mirror, another Calabial um, three-fold Y, for which their um, Hodge diamonds are rotated under 90 degrees. So H11 of the first guy is the H12 of the second one, and H12 of the first guy is H11 of the second one. Uh, historically, probably uh, the most important paper, probably starting point was the Candelas de la Osa Green Parquez paper, where they studied um, quintic threefold in P4, Calabial threefold uh, with very nice and surprisingly easy construction of the mirror, which is unusual in that topic. Um, also, Borcha Boisin construction originated um, independently by Borcha and Boisin, uh, 94 and 96, I guess. Uh, also provides a, a very nice example with a nice construction of the mirror. Uh, according to my knowledge, this conjecture is uh, super open. I mean, there are only few uh, explicit examples where this conjecture is fully verified. Um, okay, some examples of Calabial manifolds. As I mentioned, elliptic curves and K3 surfaces but also uh, some complete intersections and hypersurfaces in toric spaces, obviously projective spaces. Um, double cover of P3 branched along non-singular surfaces of degree eight, uh, studied by Tsing and Schoenberg. Uh, after that, uh, Tsing in his uh, several ser series of papers studied that construction for the union of eight hyperplanes. And he obtained very interesting examples of Calabial threefolds from both arithmetical and geometrical point of view. Also, a uh, very important construction uh, due to Shen, Shen's fiber product. Uh, he used a um, fiber product of elliptic surfaces. Especially, they are um, very important in, uh, in the topic because they have small, uh, small Euler characteristic something like uh, the modulus is equal to six, as Slovak mentioned, uh, this kind of Calabial three folds are really pleasant for physicists. Um, toric constructions by Borisov and Batyrev, since they are toric, um, they have some kind of combinatorial data attached to them. So at some point can be handled by computer. So of course they are important for verifying um, some observations. And as I mentioned uh, previously, Borcha was a Calabial threefold, which is very important for, for my PhD. Uh, soon I will generalize that construction. What is that? Um, they used uh, K3 surface and elliptic curves, basically. Uh, they took the product of K3 surface equipped with non-symplectic involution. It is just involution, but um, this involution, the induced action acts on the period of our Calabia manifold. Period, it's a generator of this right and left vertices, vector spaces in the Hodge diamond. So um, this kind of um, automorphism acts as a multiplication by some fixed uh, root of unity. In that case, uh, just by minus one. So they divide the product of this um, Calabial type varieties by some finite group action in fact Z2. And it also provides a very beautiful way of constructing Calabial manifolds. Basically, we can take a some Calabial type varieties. Uh, Calabial type means uh, with trigger canonical bundle, we can find some group, finite group action. Uh, it would be super if, uh, very good if uh, this group action will preserve the canonical bundle. Then we can form a quotient variety. And then we can find some resolution of singularities. But uh, usually this kind of 
resolution may affect on, on canonical divisor. So we are looking for such a resolution of singularities which preserves canonical divisor. Thanks to this idea, uh, if we start with something which has a uh, trivial canonical divisor after resolution of after this prep and resolution, uh, we, um, we will finally get a manifold with trivial uh, canonical bundle, which is smooth. Okay, so this is the idea. And that uh, resolution is called prep and it is highlighted on the, in the definition. Uh, if we take a quotient singularities, quotient means uh, CN over G, okay? If we, if we take this type of singularities, then in dimension two, everything works very well. It is due to Klein. It's very classical result. It can be found in many, many places in the literature and so on. This surfaces uh, are known as Kleinian singularities, Duval surface singularities. And they are connected with, uh, with many other things, including Dimkin diagrams, some elements of representation theory, and many more. All these things are, are joined by the slogan Makkai correspondence. Uh, and, it's, and, it's, and it's really a beautiful part of, of the theory. In, uh, in third dimension, uh, we have result due to Rohan. Uh, also, um, the quotient of C3 by G, where G is a finite subgroup of SL3, has a Krepan resolution. It does not have a unique Krepan resolution because in the Klein a situation we have unique prepand, but still here in three dimensional case, we have a prepand resolution. But in higher dimensions, uh, the, uh, there are some difficulties. Even if we take C4 over Z2, cyclic group of order two, that one can show, and in fact, it's not so easy. Uh, one can show that um, that quotient uh, does not admit any crep and the resolution of singularity. So in higher dimension, we may have some troubles. Also what is, uh, what is very beautiful uh, about two, di two dimensional and three dimensional case, when we compute Euler characteristic of the result, I mean, of the crep and resolution of C3 over G, then this uh, Euler characteristic equals number of conjugacy classes uh, in G. So it's a beautiful relation, I will come come to it soon. Okay, but uh, there are some examples and one of the most important is the family of examples or uh, made by, uh, discovered by Singh and Hulek, which is a family of arbitrary dimensional Calabial manifolds. Um, the idea is almost the same as um, borcha Voisin but we take elliptic curves equipped with uh, automorphism of order D. D here is two, three, or four. And then we can find a natural action by this group GDN. Uh, it's in fact isomorphic to N minus one power of cyclic group of order D. And of course it preserves canonical divisor uh, our product of elliptic curves is, of course, a product of Calabial type varieties. And then Singh and Kulek uh, proved that uh, in the case of two, three, and four, uh, the quotient variety has a Crepon resolution. And therefore, we have uh, arbitrary dimensional Calabial manifold. Uh, so, uh, as we know, only one case is missing because elliptic curve, when we work over C, over complex numbers, elliptic curves may have also automorphism of order six. And the part of my PhD thesis uh, is just study the missing case, D equals six of this singular construction. Uh, well, because six is much more complicated number than two, three, and four, because it's not the prime power. The iterated approach used by Tseng and Kuleg in their original paper cannot be adopted in this case. So what was the, the idea? Idea was to use toric resolution of singularities. 
basically if we have abelian subgroup of SLM, then the quotient CN over G contains algebraic torus. Okay, so you may consider it as a toric variety. And um, the properties of CN over G can be detected from some combinatorial properties of some lattice in RM. The most important lattice there is some kind, of, which is something which is called junior simplex. It's just the slice of the quadrant uh, by this hyperplane sum of coordinates equal to one. And from toric geometry, it follows uh, that the toric prepon resolutions of such a of such a quotient C n over G uh, is in one to one correspondence with uh, triangulation subdivisions of the junior simplex into uh, into some parts uh, spanned by um, by points in this uh, junior simplex, which are in, in integral points, which are called junior uh, junior points. So. Uh, basically, let me let me go dig deeply into the proof. Uh, if we if we go to the proof of the main statement in um, D equals six case, then for me the most important are four types of quotient sing singularities. Here, this uh, one six one to three means basically that. <coughs> This is the singularity appearing when we consider the action of um, of a cyclic group of order D on CN, which is given by, by this map, by this written map. So um, because I will do some kind of induction, uh, I need also to be sure that um, that the action of my group from the previous step will lift to the next step uh, to, to make this induction uh, work, okay? So for doing this, for checking if the, if the group action lifts to the resolution, it would be great to have explicit maps from CN to this resolution. And if we consider two-dimensional case, uh, this is very classical. And also it can be um, seen in many places in the literature. And it's also very beautiful because it's connected with continued fractions. Here's a bruch young continued fraction and many more things. Uh, here, the junior simplex is just, is just a segment. So uh, if, we, if we consider uh, the action of Z6, so we have six elements, six conjugacy classes, so, so uh, by, by this slide, what I said, uh, it is enough to divide the segment, basically this quadrant into six parts of equal area or the segment with equal length, all right? So we can do it, of course, uh, uniquely uh, as it is um, displayed on the picture. And uh, of course, we can, um, we can read from the coordinates of this, um, of these divisions, uh, the, the, the explicit the maps uh, from C2 to the resolution. And having these explicit maps, uh, I, can, uh, I can read if, uh, if my group action lifts uh, to the resolution and make the, the induction uh, work. In three-dimensional case, the situation is a little bit difficult, uh, but thanks to the algorithm written in the paper Crow and Read, uh, we also have, um, have a way of dividing junior simplex in that case uh, into some parts, uh, equal area parts. Uh, and here is presented also uh, the way of writing some monom some some rational functions on the on the sides of these triangles and arrows, uh, which is helpful in order to construct this this map uh, from C three to the resolution. And it is given explicitly as um, as written. Uh, in the case of singularity one to three, we get uh, five different triangulations of our triangle into six parts of equal equal area parts, but only but only one um, one of them, the last one, 
gives us um, a good lifting of the action. Uh, in the in the in the in the four uh, highlighted um, cases, triangulations, great triangles fails to have um, the lifting property. So only one, the last one case, uh, is useful um, for our considerations, and we can do the same uh, the same analysis. Uh, for that picture, for that uh, singularity, uh, and we can have we have a maps from C3 to the resolution, and we will check that um, this is in fact uh, the, it lead, leads to the resolution. And four-dimensional case, as uh, as we can easily guess, it's about dividing uh, the tetrahedron into six equal volume parts. And this part should be spanned by junior points. Uh, we have only six junior points here. I hope uh, I make uh, this division visible. Uh, if, we, if we do cutting like this, then we will get six equal volume parts. And thanks to, to the historic method, we can have uh, explicitly written maps uh, from C4 to the resolution. And this is just the crucial part um, of the proof. And I think it looks uh, way better than, than, the, than the rest technicals about uh, induction. Okay, um, so Sinkhulek construction works in uh, the case of D equals six. And uh, now I would like to present uh, another things. Uh, and other generalizations, because uh, as I mentioned, uh, for mirror symmetry, uh, Borchavoisin construction played a crucial, crucial role. And uh, in 2016, this construction was generalized by Catanello and Gabagnati, and they allowed uh, to have K3 surface with uh, purely non symplectic automorphism of order two, three, four, and six. So we basically uh, can do the same what Borcha and Boisem did, but, uh, but uh, we allow uh, higher order um, automorphism. Of course, we are limited by the, by the orders of the automorphism of elliptic um, curve. Uh, for K3 surfaces, we have a lot of non symplectic automorphism. I think the maximum order is 66 or something. Uh, so, what I did, what I tried to, what I tried to do, is to make some kind of joint generalization of Tsinghulek construction, so allowing arbitrary many factors and Borchavoisin uh, constructions in the, in the generalization of Catanel and Garbagnati. So uh, I did the following. Uh, if we consider K3 surface with non-symplectic automorphism of order D, here we have uh, two, three, four, and six, and ED as usual, the elliptic curve with automorphism of order D, then the same group acts naturally by the product on the product k3 surface times ed to the power n minus one and then we can consider the action of this group on that variety make a quotient and try to find the crepon resolution of singularities of the resulting n plus one dimensional calabio variety because uh, k3 surface has yeah dimension two so we have n plus one dimensional and uh my idea, my, 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 my proof, which I presented in dimensional case, uh, can be adopted in, in the full generality here also. And there exists such a resolution. So we obtained um, the same as previously and plus one dimensional Calabio varieties. Okay, uh, but um, what I wanted to do next, if I have a examples of Calabio manifold, it would be great to compute all its invariants. So for Hodge numbers, I used so-called chen ruan cohomology, uh, which is very complicated formula. Uh, for example, 
look at the ingredients uh, we some over conjugacy classes over a set of irre irreducible com connected components and also uh, we act on uh, on this vector space by centralizer of element g so we are in the abelian case so centralizer is the whole group so we need to act on it by this uh, by this huge group uh, also we have here age of the matrix if we work with sln well basically age is some kind of filtration on elements of g uh, when we put uh, the matrix in the diagonal form that this is just uh, then the action is basically like uh, like 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 here like here and this uh, and the sum of uh, a1 plus a2 plus a n over d will be denoted by the age of this element crucial uh, result is the theorem of yasuda which says that uh, if i have a crepon resolution of the variety x over g and g is a finite group and x is of course smooth algebraic variety then the Hodge numbers of this Crepon resolution can be computed using this dimensions of these vector spaces. So, on, so I need the knowledge about the existence of a Crepon resolution, and then using that formula, I can compute this, these numbers. Of course, this formula is very complicated, but the advantage of this approach is that I I uh, I don't need to deep dig into the complicated resolution process of that variety. So I try to do it for much more general setup, not only elliptic curves and K3 surfaces, but for arbitrary uh, varieties of Calabi-Yau type Xi equipped uh, with uh, automorphisms, non-symplectic automorphisms of order D. And then, of course, we have a natural group action on, on the product x1 times x2 and so on. And uh, let, us, let us assume that there exists a crepant resolution of that quotient x1 times uh, xn over zd to n minus 1. And then uh, using chen one cohomology after some technical simplifications and introducing Poincaré polynomials of some fixed pon law size of powers of this automorphism, I uh, obtained the following formula for HPQ. Uh, I know it also looks not so nice uh, because we have a lot of sum, a lot of products, but first of all, we don't have uh, any action on something. Also, uh, uh, believe me, it can be implemented in some uh, software uh, like MAPE, and uh, we may have result immediately. Uh, here may be small explanation, X, P, Y, Q in, the, in these brackets means I just take uh, the coefficient of that polynomial in X, P, and Y, Q. So having this coefficient, it is equal HPQ of this Crepon resolution. Uh, so uh, maybe this is a description how easy it is if we form the following tables where entries are Poincaré polynomials of this um, of this fixed law size of powers of automorphisms, then it is just a, a scalar product of that vector with that vector VD. And then we need to multiply all values of that vector and sum and add these vectors for j from zero to d minus one and update, uh, and we can obtain the, the, the result. Uh, using MAPE, it's, it's, uh, it's super easy. So maybe uh, let me give you a small example. If we consider Tsing Hulek uh, construction, uh, and here I used only elliptic curves with automorphisms of order six, then this table looks like this. And we can apply that formula and just by hand, we can compute that HPQ, the Hodge numbers uh, of this uh, family uh, X6N is equal to the coefficient in X, XPYQ 
of that complicated uh, polynomial. But uh, yes, and the result for all remaining cases, two, three, and four are included in this, um, in this theorem. Uh, okay, and some Hodge diamonds of that varieties. Look, uh, we have only positive entries on the main diagonal and we have ones uh, on the left and right uh, diagonal. Uh, yes, so it looks like this. Um, another example, it's much more complicated because uh, I put on the first factor K3 surface with non-symplectic automorphism of order three. And in fact, the formula here, it's not quite true. I mean, it is true, of course, uh, only if the age uh, of uh, this automorphism is equal to what uh, we want to have. I mean, it is just a sum of M1s, Mi's over D. But uh, sometimes, and for example, in uh, a yeah. surface with non symplectic automorphism of order three, we have isolated points, isolated point with linearization two to two. So the age adds to our favorite number one. So we need to make uh, some kind of correction. And this correction is basically multiplication of some entries of my tables by x, y. So it's not a uh, so it's not big issue. I wanted to present it in that way because the full general formula looks uh, bad. But uh, that formula I presented together with this small correction is is, is now true. And then if you apply this formula, maybe uh, by hand will be not so easy, but the result uh, looks like um, looks like on the slides. And let me show you some examples. So uh, Borcha Voisin, original Borcha Voisin case, uh, when, uh, when we have degree six, uh, H11, as I told you, only H11 and H12 are important. Of course, here we have some numbers in variants, R, H, K, M, and genus of some curve C. Uh, of course, these are parameters attached to the k surface, uh, especially, uh, especially on the fixed point loci of this automorphism. Thanks to the work of many, many people, we have either complete or partial classification of non-symplectic automorphisms or k surfaces with a fixed, with, the, with an explicit description of the fixed point loci. So uh, we may have uh, this data and parameters attached to K3 surfaces. So here we have this these examples, how it looks like in higher dimensions. All right. And after that, uh, I decided to focus on zeta functions. It is a very important object attached to algebraic variety. Uh, it encodes uh, very important information, such as uh, the number of FQR rational points. Here we consider algebraic variety over uh, some finite field F FQ, where Q is a prime power. Uh, probably, probably the most important achievement in mathematics from the previous century is, is confirmation of various conjectures, which says that our zeta function is rational. Uh, moreover, it satisfies some functional equations and have a lot of properties. Look, for example, on that formula. Uh, Y conjecture says that uh, zeta function is a rational function and in the numerator and denominator, we have product of some polynomials and these polynomials have roots and these roots are algebraic integers with known modulus also the degrees of these polynomials are Betty numbers. So a lot of information attached to our algebraic variety in one single uh, function. Uh, in the literature in the past, uh, there are not so many 
algebraic variety, especially Calabiao varieties with explicitly computed zeta functions. Known examples are included basically in some hypersurfaces and complex intersections uh, in toric spaces. Also in 2006, due to Gotto Livne Yui, we got a uh, we got the explicit computation of L function, zeta function of uh, borcia Voisin. There is also another example of due to Algren, uh, which is basically some double cover. Some, some examples similar to the examples uh, made by Tsing and Schoenberg, but in higher dimensional, in high, I think five dimensional case. And I think that's all. Uh, so, um, so there is only a limited uh, range of examples when the zeta function is known. Uh, using results of Rosen, uh, who introduced El Adic Chen Ruan cohomology and Orbifold Frobenius, uh, I was able to do the same game, almost the same game as uh, with the formulas for Hodge numbers. Basically, uh, in that general setup for Calabial type um, varieties with orthomorphies of order D, if I assume that the Crepan resolution of XDN exists, then I can introduce uh, some objects, some entries of my tables, and then obtain formula, closed formula for um, zeta function. Uh, and again, this formula can be easily Im implemented into, into some uh, software systems like uh, programs like MATE, and we can have result immediately. Uh, here, the tensor product, here we have tensor product of uh, rational functions. It is just a lifting of the usual tensor product for rational functions. So uh, everything works probably, yeah, basically the same as in the case of Hodge numbers. Computation is very easy. It's just uh, some kind of combination of, uh, of scalar product of that column with this kind of vector. And then finally, we need to take also minus one to the n plus one power of the result. So let me show you some explicit computation. Uh, here we have elliptic uh, K3 surface uh, equipped with order six non-symplectic automorphism. We have a probably almost full of list of that um, non-symplectic automorphisms uh, due to Dilys. So I took uh, one. And of course, elliptic curve with Weierstrass equation y squared equal to x cubed plus one. Also, it is equivalent with a non-symplectic automorphism of order six. And then uh, we can form these tables. Here we have some entries coming from uh, zeta function of elliptic curve. Of course, for uh, K3 surface uh, with correction and this, uh, and, uh, and similarly as previously, we need to do some kind of correction because otherwise the formula will be um, super complicated. So here the correction uh, will be also uh, some evaluation on some power of T. And then we can do the computation, but here only using computer uh, it, it's easiest way is to use computer because otherwise uh, dealing uh, by hand with tensor product would be impossible. And the result looks like what we expect and what uh, what Gottlieb Nayui obtained in 2006. Uh, what I wanted to stress also, uh, as probably you remember, if not, I will recall Hodge Diamond of that variety. Uh, of the uh, of this s six times e six over z six is equal is looks like this. So we have h one one equal one o three, and here we have the uh, the degree one o three also. So the, we can see this interplay between a lot of data and numerical things attached to it to these varieties and this zeta functions. So it can be computed explicitly. In higher dimensional cases, so for 
and five, uh, yeah, of course, zeta function is complicated. And in six dimensional case, uh, I decided not uh, to write this formula because it was too long. And then uh, here we have um, some uh, example of Hodge diamonds of the varieties. Uh, why I choose this uh, particular example of uh, elliptic curve uh, uh, of K3 surface equipped with order six automorphism, because when you look at the Hodge diamond, then it looks almost the same as the Hodge diamond of the Tsing Hulek um, varieties, but we have one here. Okay, so this is uh, probably next step of difficulty of com of complication of the Hodge diamond. Usually, uh, usually if we take another example, another K3 surface with order six automorphisms, that uh, then um, many more positive terms will appear in this Hodge diamond. So the slogan, the conclusion is the follows is uh, is the following. Uh, when we have every when we know everything about K3 surface, when we know everything about elliptic curves, when we know everything basically about uh, our Calabial type variety, and it can be explicitly computed as here all these invariants attached to them, then K3 then zeta function can be computed also explicitly uh, as the Hodge numbers too. And this is all what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's thank Dominic for his talk. And uh, are there any questions? No. I, I, I'm not sure because I have an impression that I heard somebody speaking, but I couldn't hear. No questions. We're on uh, in the room. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm not sure if I hear the question correctly because uh, I also was not able to understand. Yes. No. Uh, there were no questions. Okay, oh, no so, questions. So, okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, if there's